And now, Adventures in Critiquing with Ponder Sprocket and guest narrator Caden Marks. First of all, I very much like the colors on this piece, especially the stark reds and the blue, particularly on her arm. The white line art of the smoke is also a nice touch, though a little more scattered towards the back. It's also difficult to discern where the smoke is blowing away from, as the separating streams of smoke below her legs seem to be layered and spreading in different directions, which doesn't entirely make sense, but it's a minor thing, honestly. Although, it is made more noticeable by the blowing of her cape and hair, which the smoke should, realistically, be blowing in the same direction of. That's something I should note as well. The lower sections of her hair and the cape flow beautifully, and I especially like the weighted look her cape seems to have around her shoulders. However, longer hair tends to be more heavy because of how much much there is, so if the wind were to be blowing so much of her hair, it would technically be blowing her bangs as well, which would be less weighted and therein wouldn't offer up as much wind resistance. The most obvious point of criticism for this piece would be the anatomical accuracy, which is sadly something I noticed from the thumbnail of the piece. Supergirl's head is not only a little too small for her body, this is made more evident by the mismatched size of her hands. Her right hand, image left, would be larger than her head if her fingers were unfurled, and her left hand, image right, is perhaps the right size for the size of her head, but it's jarring when compared to her other hand. Her left arm, image right, also suffers from this. I understand that the intent was to reduce the size of the arm that would be in the background, but the pose presented here doesn't offer enough of a difference in perspective for the hands and arms to be such obviously different sizes. Additionally, her torso is abnormally long. This can be seen prominently by the placement of her breasts and her waist, which should be as low down as the middle of her upper arm and her elbow respectively. This exact exaggerated elongation also means that her lower pelvic area is at the same height as her resting arm, wherein her arm should actually reach down to her thigh. As for the face, her nose is a little large for how she's normally portrayed, though I understand that might be a style choice, but her jawline is a little too pronounced for a woman as young as she is typically shown to be. Overall, it's a nice piece, but I would suggest focusing more on anatomical accuracy in the future, as it will help you in drawing more dynamic and interesting pieces and poses. That's all the critique I can offer up at the moment. Hope it was helpful. Hello, and sorry for delay on response. Thank you very much for detailed description and critics. I really appreciate it, but I can't agree on all that you said. Only that her left arm is smaller than it's supposed to be. I had a little bit struggle with that, and honestly, I don't know why. Sometimes you just stuck on something. But for the rest, I can't agree. Sometimes I do really draw a smaller head, but I don't think it's same for this one. I it was more bigger, it would look like brats. My opinion, it's just my style. But in realistic drawing, human body is 7.5 heads. In comic, it's 8 heads, and it goes to 9 heads. That is not realistic, right? Of course it's not. But it gives some other impression. I made her more powerful and more muscular than it is usually. Remember, a lot of artists from history had more muscular females and more like a man looking. Michelangelo, for example, had really big females, etc. Point is, everybody has his slash her style and technique. I believe you like more realistic art, but art has no limits in my opinion. It can be abstract and realistic in whatever you want or just a dot on white paper. It doesn't matter where smoke comes from. If I wanted that, I would draw a source. It's just decorative thing in this piece. Again, thank you very much for you, Critic, and I am sadly going to click unfair even though you were right about her left arm. Thank you and good luck with your art, Adam. Fucking Christ. I never mentioned anything about the way you composed her musculature, I was specifically making note of anatomical incorrectness based on the way she was drawn. Added musculature does not change the skeletal structure, and it was the skeletal structure presented that I found to have the most problems. I honestly don't even consider her to be that muscular the way you've drawn her. She looks very similar in muscle mass to the way most people draw her, so I'm confused as to why you've even brought this up as a counterpoint. I understand that comic book characters are normally drawn taller or with larger breasts, but shock of all shocks, comic book artists tend 
tend to still adhere to the same anatomical designs of the actual human body. The fact of the matter remains that her torso is too long, and you can tell this simply by looking at a picture of a woman standing. Even if you're using your own style or technique, it helps to have an intimate understanding of the human body, and I honestly feel that this is what you need to work on the most. I even looked over your other works and found similar problems, and for someone with so much obvious potential, I'm disappointed that you would ignore a critique primarily focused on anatomy and would simply defend it with, that's my style because muscles. And you cannot say that this is simply part of your style because you did it right here insert link. My critiques about the elongated torso, the placement of the breasts, and the lengths of the arms are all fixed in this piece. If this was all simply a part of your style, it would be evident in all of your pieces, but some of your works, like this one, are anatomically correct. The Supergirl piece isn't one of them. Seriously, take these two drawings and compare them with a stringent eye, in my hopes that you will actually recognize the difference and grow from that. Additionally, you've made no comment regarding my critiques towards the misdirection of the blowing wind, the weight of her hair, or the length of her arm with relation to her waist and hips. Of all the critiques, I wrote that particular day, I'm honestly surprised that yours is the only one to be rejected and ignored in this sort of manner. Truthfully, I'm very disappointed. If you're not going to take critiques into account, I ask that you please don't make your work critiquable. Hello again. First of all, I really appreciate someone else's opinion. It's not that I don't appreciate critics. You input really means a lot to me as anyone else's who understand this line of work. I had to contact my mentor after this because I was a bit confused and I wanted to prove myself wrong, smiley face. I take criticism all the time, and I know that I usually do wrong. It's usually that head, smiley face. So here is what he said to me and I agree with him and you about this. Head is little smaller and proportions are not right. Here left side of nose is too big, eyes maybe and her lips specifically her upper lip is too high. So yes, you were right about her head. My apologies about that. Her left arm and hand were supposed to be bigger, so correct there. But, when it comes to her torso, he said it was fine and that I measure it right. But, but, one thing that I and you didn't notice is shading on it. I messed up some parts when shading it, but not that big mistake. I am really busy man lately and it's my mistake to request critic about work and don't have enough time to check everything out like I should. So, when I said that's my style, maybe I wasn't expressing myself correctly. Sorry about that. I was in a hurry. You sent me preview of my other work that was correct. Yes, I agree with you and I agree that is different. It's different style just a bit, and you will see some other works that are different. If you take a look at my works, you will see that some of those are more realistic and some are more cartoonish. That's what I tried to combine last couple years into my works. I experiment a little with techniques, style, colors, etc. I don't have problems drawing things as I see it, realistic, but I want my works to look different. I tried to combine few different styles. For example, that image you sent me was my wife's model, so she was my model, and that's how that came out. When I draw portraits for real figure live, I don't have problem drawing it realistic. When it comes to pure imagination, there is struggle. Anyway, my mentor told me that torso and her breasts are good, but shading beneath her right arm is bit poorly done, and maybe that her right shoulder is a bit bigger but in this piece, it has to be so it would give impact on eye. I did take a look closely and saw these things, and I think it's fair from you to give critic like that. I changed from unfair to fair. And thank you again. I hope you are not offended in any way. One more thing. I forgot. Difference between those two works is because second one that you sent me has proportions of real person and it's straight up. Supergirl is angled and in perspective just a bit. English is not my native language, so I tried to describe what I think in a best way. If she's supposed to be angled in any way other than a straight-on piece, then that's also something I should have critiqued, because I am afraid it doesn't come off like that at all. I meant she is not standing straight. Her body is not standing straight, like woman in other piece. She is flying and look is from a side. And I don't know why I didn't mention before, but those white things around her is not smoke, it's clouds. 
Okay, one, if they were clouds and she'd just emerged from beneath them, then they would have followed her motion upwards, not split apart for her to fly through like displayed here. Two, I can tell the look is from the side, that doesn't change the anatomy. The perspective would, to be sure, but there's no obvious perspective in this piece. If you intended there to be perspective, then I'm afraid it doesn't come off well. Furthermore, if there were some sort of obvious vertical perspective, the kind of perspective that would change the way a person views a character's whole body, then it would typically squish a character's torso, not elongate it. Look. Example piece. Here's a picture of Supergirl drawn from the same angle as your piece. Despite being drawn from the side, there's no obvious perspective, and look at where the hips and chest are. Granted, the arms on this piece are a little short, but the torso of this piece is angled roughly the same as yours, and yet the anatomy is correct. I was pointing out and referencing that other piece of yours that the length of the character's torso is anatomically accurate despite your defending the anatomical mistakes in the Supergirl piece, with it being a part of your style. The character turning to the side wouldn't change the length of her torso unless the viewer were looking at her from a low or high angle. My god, if you don't like the critique, then fine, who cares, but stop bothering me with excuses and justifications for the problems I found with your work. I didn't respond to your last few comments in the hopes that you'd be done, but now you're just getting annoying. At this point, I've lost all interest in whether you artistically progress or not. And you are really rude, dude. Honestly, I'm gonna put a little bit of commentary here. That is the best statement in this entire thing. How old are you? Oh, I'm sorry, I was unaware my age had anything to do with me getting tired of someone making excuses for a critique of their work. I'm rude and you're obtuse. Yes, you are really rude. It's not same telling someone that they are rude and other thing to offend someone like saying that they are obtuse. No, I was just wondering how old are you? Old enough to know when a conversation's going nowhere. And I didn't make excuses, I was trying to be nice. Are you going to say that my mentor who is 50 years painter is wrong? Sure. I should note at this point I was just done. My mentor, one of most famous painters in my country, and had over 300 students on his own. Yes, he is wrong. Smiley face. <laughs> the smiley face is proof that he's right. Ha, XD. Yeah, I'll believe that when I see it. Look, I ain't critiquing your mentor, I'm critiquing you. I couldn't care less under whom you purportedly study. I looked at one of your pieces, noticed an anatomical inconsistency, then brought up one other piece to demonstrate the difference in your displayed anatomy to illustrate my point. You're the one who continued the conversation, making excuses for the anatomical inconsistencies with because muscles and she's from the side. My goal in pointing out these problems was to help you improve in later pieces. All you've done since then is make excuses. Then, when I stopped responding, you continued to send me messages making excuses that, frankly, didn't at all change anything regarding my original critique. Now you're mad that I've become annoyed with this tedious back and forth? Seriously, you find it weird that I became annoyed after figuring out I've effectively wasted my time because the guy I thought had a lot of potential is acting like me when I was 16? Ugh. One thing is critique, and one thing is offending someone. Me annoying! and boring. Let's not do that. And I didn't try to justify myself. If you like it, then you like it. If not, who cares? Everybody has their own opinion. Good luck with your critiques. An image that you sent is correct, except her breasts. XD. You going on about how if you like it, then you like it, if not, who cares, is hilarious considering all of the messages you've sent me trying to convince me of the contrary to my original critique. And you'll note that my original critique didn't refer to you as annoying. That only happened when you continued to annoy me. Funny how that works. Good luck, dude, and goodbye. Facebook link to most likely his mentor or some random porn site. Google if you want to find out more. He is most famous in 70s and 80s. Of course I'm going to listen to him, and I have all respect for his work over all those years. He is my mentor, and not only one, I had two more on college. I am actually feeling good when someone says that I act like 16. I have two kids, so that makes me younger somehow. I don't get mad that easily, only when someone is trying to hurt my child, and that doesn't happen. I wish you all the best in your work and your critiques, and I really appreciate your opinion. Sorry if I didn't respond correctly, but I tried to be. Bring a little humor to your critiques, it would help you, smiley face. Really. Again, smiley face is proof that he's absolutely right. Hey, at least he seems to be able to get the length of a torso right. Have fun learning. You know, Ponder, after all this stuff, you better give me a shout out to my channel at the end of this, or I will most likely do nothing and just sulk all the time. And... Well, I didn't even notice that! Oh my <laughs> god! Oh!
Toronto. <laughs> wow. You see, I'm a hornball that likes punk music, weird art, and violence, and that's just scratching the surface with me. Just got depression. Massive depression. I'm really hungry now. Hey guys, so this is a bit of a departure from my typical content, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Adventures in Critiquing is not directly meant to showcase one person as being in the right and one person being in the wrong, but is instead a basic reading of interactions that I've had that follow a critique I've given. Since I've been wanting to expand out content on my channel, I'll make videos like these whenever I have a good dialogue to work with and read from. Anywho, many thanks go out to the cutie pies that drew my trash bag of a character. What can I say except I'm ponder, drawn by the Precious Blue Critiques, Ponder Lizzie and Mage Fan Art drawn by the Made to Break Boundaries Broken Deer, Bikini Bod by the Bodacious Splatter Pop, and Ponder Sprocket as Mysterio by the Treasure at the End of the Rainbow at One Wigged Dash. If you're hankering for some of my own art, you can follow me on DeviantArt, check out my comics on to pass, or become a supporter on Patreon for early access to sketches, comics, videos, and not safe for work Patreon exclusives. See you later, cuties! Ponder out.